Hello to your subscribers. And thank you for sharing another issue of Gaia Speaks with me. I can't tell you how much it tickles me to be able to share this time with you. If you could see what you look like in this wonderful list that I have, and I see your names and how many different cities and countries and backgrounds that you are all from, and yet I know that we're part of Gaia's family in this way. And uh, I don't get tired of saying thank you for sharing this time with me. Thank you for caring about the planet in the ways that you do. And, uh, and well, I just want to introduce our subject to you for the day. It seems that the subject of ETs is coming up again and again and again in lots of different ways. And in fact, even as I was already considering offering an issue that had something to do with ETs, I turned on the TV one day and there was Stephen Hawking uh, giving an interview and offering his views about how he believed in, uh, in ETs, in extraterrestrials, and that he thought that they were near enough to, to the Earth and that they were more than likely an advanced race and at the same time, um, more than likely, not necessarily of a peaceful mind or character, at least in what they had um, thought about the earth. And of course, I couldn't resist but ask Gaia that very moment, is that so? Is it true? And I, I could just feel this great tickle of energy welling up inside of me, just in that way where someone knows a secret and they're saying, ask me, ask me, ask me. <laughs> so I saved it just for today. And that's exactly what I'm doing. And uh, hopefully everything that we would like to know about this subject or as much as possible, this is a great time to ask it. So thanks again and enjoy. Indeed, I am tickled to share these moments with you and to delve into a topic that is very much of interest to all concerned because after all whom are we speaking of we are speaking of your very own family members you are only now becoming aware that you are all part of the family of man not necessarily the species of man in which you all concede that you belong to one aspect of one being, sharing a planet with different kingdoms and elements, but so much more than that as well. And just as you are becoming aware of all of your family members, with or without borders, your heritage, the skin colors, and the ancient histories and wisdoms that accompany these, now it is time to make an evolutional leap, a very fast one, a very forward-thinking one, one that will quicken the pace of all things, space travel, galactic thought, evolutionary discoveries, discoveries that involve physiology, physics, those that will rewrite some of the laws of man as they have come to be understood, the changes that you will make as you expand and explore your ideas of who your family is, that will take you, of course, naturally, to ask the questions as well to who and what you are and to look for a deeper answer, perhaps a better answer, one that explains more than has been explained to you thus far. And so what is necessary for all of this information to come forward? How do you move so quickly from being a simple family of man member to being the member of a galactic race and a galactic family and one that will welcome you even further? Well, it is a simple process. And for the most part, all that is necessary is the same open mind and the same open heart that has opened all of the other doors for you. 
Some of these doors are a little bit like corridors. Some of them are broad and others are narrow. Some of them lead somewhere immediately. And some of them you must simply travel down or through that corridor for a little bit long time before you discover. This will be the case in regards to the extra terrestrials, your family members, your galactic family. It is time to purchase perhaps a few more family albums that you will add to if you keep them on the shelf or where you do. Your family then, to be clear, is a galactic one. This means that whether or not you have found yourself in a human body, in a human shape, regardless of whether you can think of countless, numerous past lives, even those that you can order again and again and say, here I was in this life and here I was in the other, and look, Gaia, they have all been upon the earth. And yes, I would nod with you in agreement with you. And still I would say, and you are more than that. And simultaneous to that, you are also being here and doing that in a different body, in a different way. And so this open mind now requires you to think in terms of a dimensional shift, in terms of corridors where time accelerates in some degree and decelerates in others. So if you are on a corridor, you may think of it a little bit like a subway station, if you like, with a train rushing in one direction and another train rushing in the other direction. One of these trains may be going much faster and in a slightly different direction, down a different tunnel or chute than the other. So the train that is accelerating has access then to greater dimensions. It is on a broader path. And so the consciousness of the train and all that is aboard the train, using this metaphor, would broaden in all respects. So the histories of what one knows about oneself and where one has come from would broaden. There would be much, much more remembrance of who you are of how you came to be here. Oh yes, it is as if the memories will come flooding back more clearly and more clearly and more of them. And the more that you, as part of this great acceleration in this train, broaden your views, your understandings, the more stops that train will be able to make to greater and different and varied places. In contrast, those who are aboard the other train, the one that is decelerating, whether it is slowly doing so or quickly coming to a halt, the memories would begin to shorten. One would begin to remember less and less about how you came to be here, for instance, where you came from, whom your ancestors might be. And the train would make less stops. It would go chugging along because the density would make it so. And yet, all of the same individuals would approach the train station. But again, with the metaphor, imagine that some are standing on one side of the track and some are standing on the other platform across the way. You can see one another, you can wave to one another, you can acknowledge, look, we are part of the same family, but now we are boarding trains for different destinations. This is an appropriate metaphor. You will see that it will serve us well on the journey that we are on. Because in essence, your family and you are well acquainted. Regardless of what form they have taken, you have come to know them as family members. You have shared with them. You have shared histories with them. You have shared perspectives with them, shared understandings with them. And so, if by chance now, where polarities are moving toward the center and dimensions are crisscrossing 
overlapping one another a little bit, well, you never know who you're going to run into, as they say. The difference is, or the importance here, is are you going to know who you run into? Are you going to recognize them? And when you do see them, are they going to look strange and as strangers to you? Or will the chance meeting that you have with them begin to say, I remember you, and you remember me. And will that then begin to open the channels of the mind in order to join with one another again? This is the time that you are in now. If you like, you can call it a window of opportunity, a strange one, but a window of opportunity. And so just as you might imagine a very busy Grand Central station for trains where there are beings coming and going, each one with their own agenda, each one in a hurry to get somewhere or know something or discover something, each one with a purpose or a mission, and yet they all crisscross there at that train station because that is where all of the trains are coming into and leaving from. It is a place of great exchange where all of the activity is taking place. Well, in the same way, that is what is taking place upon the earth at this time. If you like, you can begin to think of the earth as a great station where understandings are being exchanged for others. Purposes and missions are being discovered. And as they are, one knows, wait, wait, I must get off this train and on to another. I know that I must be going in another direction. I need to. And so there is an exchange of energies this way. Those that are coming are now going. Others that were not certain which train to board or in what direction are now discovering, no, I must be the six o'clock or the tomorrow morning. I must be aboard that one at that time. And so each one of you has a knowing in that direction. So it is a time in which purposes are shifting and engaging and exchanging one another. If it were viewed from the outside, well, I tell you that the lot of you would appear to be very wishy-washy. I do not know who I am. No, I do not know what I want. It is as if many have amnesia now. You are forgetting. And that is appropriate. Now, many are chastising themselves for forgetting is if you are saying, but I have come this far, and for what? Just to now forget, or I have come this far studying this, or doing that, or installing myself in this occupation or the other purpose, just to discover that I was not meant to do that at all, and that I am in a hurry to change? Well, yes, my friends, be in a hurry to change, if that is what comes to your mind. You are ex-changing. Now, we will continue with the same metaphor and imagine that you cannot take a train from here to there. It is not done. There is no train that goes from here to there, particularly when you want to go. Ah, but there is another suggestion, they say. Look, you can go from here to there. And if you time it just right, from there you will make a connection going to where you would like to make. But first, or the only way, is to go from here to there first. At first you say, no, no, I do not want to do that. That is very far out of my way. And once you have reassured yourself that it is in fact the only way, then you say, well, so be it. Part of it will be for sightseeing, or part of it I will study up or read up on where I am going or what I am about to do or engage in. It appears that this is the way to go. And so that is what many, if not most of you, have done. Perhaps it was not the purpose or the job that you believed that you had signed on for, but perhaps it is something else, and perhaps you have found that out as well. And so going from here to there first, yes, that is exactly what you must do. And then you discover that it is exactly the right way to go so that you can continue on your journey. Now that you have done that, 
Now the pace quickens. Now you find yourself in a place of exchanging thoughts, dimensions, engagements, purposes. And from here, this taking off point, this jumping off place, allows you then the mobility, the capacity, the capability to see elsewhere, to see how and where you belong now, to make more specific your choices and your journeys. And so now that you are doing just that, the new train comes, the new model, the one that goes further, faster, the one that stops at many more places, the one that affords many more panorama, and yes, many different companions or seat mates that you could not have had before. So now is the time to meet more of your family, to introduce yourself or to be introduced to them. As we say the words now, now means the present. Now means that it is already taking place. Now means that it is already available to you, that the doors are open to you. And at the same time, it is your choice. What do you wish to do in this regard? What do you wish to know or to be? As with many of the changes that are taking place, some of them appear to arrive out of nowhere. And all of a sudden there is the idea or the choice of what you must do or where you must go. And it feels as if it is an imperative. It must be so. It is the same way with those that visit earth. Because as I said earlier, it is now almost the entire earth has become that busy train station, exchanging guests as quickly as you can exchange ideas. Imagine now for a moment how many thoughts do you have in that moment? How many thoughts do you might imagine that you have in a one hour time period? And what if I were to tell you that as many different thoughts as you can conceive of in one hour, that is how many other beings from other worlds or from advanced versions of this world have exchanged in and around and near you? 10,000? 100,000? How many different thoughts how many different beings. It is that varied a place that you live in. Think for a moment. How many different species of fish are there? How many different species of the simplest and commonest plants are there? How many different humans are there? As you begin to conceive the vastness of this, know that the same and an even grander sense applies to those that you consider extraterrestrial. Now, this term is a very, very poor term. For who, after all, is an extraterrestrial? Shall we use it to apply to those who have come from far away, whose home planet or another world is distant from here? Well, certainly that could apply to many of you as well. Your memories would confirm it if they could, if your brain was aligned so that it would fire in certain ways and directions that would accelerate this. Many of these memories would return to you and very quickly. But these would fall out of favor quickly with your linear mind that has things ordered X, Y, Z, A, B, C. And the memories and thoughts that I am referring to are not ordered in that way. And so first, before you will have all of these memories, you will need to reorganize your brain, reorganize your thoughts. The simplest way to do that is simply to be open to the subject. For instance, just as we have said, how many different species of fish are there upon the earth? 
and to say to yourself in the very next moment, there must be that many versions of extraterrestrials upon the earth as well, for are they not also just another species, just another kingdom or part of the earth, or part of the solar system, or part of the galaxy? And to the degree that I am unique, they too are unique. The moment that you allow there to be another kingdom, for instance, called E.T., your brain will accommodate this. Your brain will make room for this. It is a little bit like saying, look, we have another family member that is moving back home, and so we must all shift over a little bit to make some extra room for the one that is coming. You would find that just that easily your mind and your thoughts will make the adjustments that are necessary to accommodate a new truth and a new understanding. The difficult part for you, for many now, is that this is not yet a new understanding and you have no proof or confirmation that it is, in fact, a truth or a fact. And so it exists merely as a concept, an idea that sometimes you are comfortable with and sometimes you are not or not yet. Now, what would make you more comfortable with the thought? Easily, you would say, well, proof, physical proof. If there was physical proof, I know that I could be comfortable with it. And yet I tell you that already you have had many different instances of that, and the mind would still argue. The mind would still say, well, I do not know for sure if that is an alien. I did not see him arrive here. Yes, that is what they tell us, but they have told us many different things before as well. And many of these conflict with one another. You see, until this is a truth that you are comfortable with, the mind will argue the point. The mind will say, it is possible, but not yet. It is possible that we will have visitors from other places, but not yet. Or perhaps we are the ones that will go to other worlds, not the other way around. You see, the moment that the mind has an argument or another plan associated with these thoughts, it is no longer an open-ended thought where you can still shift over and make room for someone. And so first, then, I would encourage you, make room. Make room in your thought process for the fact that you are already living in a world that has already long and longer ago made a place for those of other races that we can simply call off-planet. Their origin in this life, this time around, has been elsewhere. And although they have found their way here by a variety of means and purposes, their home, or what they would call their natural home, is not the earth at this time. But just as you might have emigrated to one country from another and still longingly think of one as the original or one as the home, even as you make your new home somewhere else, that is the case with many off-planet visitors. They very well know and remember another world. They also know this one. They know this one because in some way it is related to them or they are related to it or they are related to you or they are you. All of these different understandings are true and they are all taking place even as we speak at this time. So the variety of races come not only from those common destinations that you have come aware of, not only from Arcturus, but yes, including that, not only from the Pleiades, but yes, including that. There are also members from the Andromedan system, from the Taurus, Taurian system. There are some that are from your very own solar system. Venus or Venusians, and those most common ones of all that you would think of in your science fiction ideas and ideals, the Mars and the Martian ones, 
Well, there are very, very few of these because they have become you over time. And so their memories of being Martians or their memories of the past of Mars itself have somewhat become lost in your memories. They have become intermingled there. The history of Mars in some ways is very similar to that of the Earth. Many different growth spurts, many different challenges, many different beings that had come from other worlds, just as your countries have beings from other different countries and nationalities, heritage. And so the history of Mars, although we could speak about that in another time of another subject, is similar to yours and as varied as yours. The resources of the planet Mars, my brother, are similar at one time and to the Earth. And part of the future of the Earth, particularly in some of the ways that you will come to build or renew the world or make your attempts to renew certain resources, that very much could come akin to Mars as well. And so when these frontiers, when it is time for the forefront of these particular subjects to come forward to rebuild and to renew and to recreate, many who have had a history of Mars will step forward with what they know, what works, and of course what their memories will tell them in their own certain ways do not, do not work. The Earth then is populated not only by humankind, not only by the animal kind in this kingdom, but almost I would tell you that there are many, many aliens off-planet beings that walk among you and beside you. And at this time, you are not capable of recognizing them. If you were to look at someone of a very beautiful ethnicity of a mixed race. You could not on your own identify perhaps all of the different influences that have come about to allow that person to look as they do. You might guess about it, but you would not be certain. If you were to come across those of off-planet, even if you had it confirmed to you where they had come from, it would be somewhat the same now. You would not be able to know specifically the identity of where they are. The reason for that is not as much that they would not reveal their true shape or form or ideas to you. The reason is that in order to find themselves in a compatible environment with the earth. In many ways, they have had to remake themselves. And so to be clear, they are not simply masking their identity to look more like you, to be less obvious or to hide among the masses. Not that. For the most part, it is that changes and accommodations have needed to be made in order to allow them to be corpulent, in order to allow them to find a physical form that they could take on that was highly compatible with the earth and at the same time allow their mind, the structure of their being, to remain as intact as possible. Now think of this. When you take yourself, the few that do, taking themselves on a space mission, and think now all of the different changes that must take place. Those that go to other worlds must be youthful. They must be among the most physically fit. They must have a very sharp, scientific mind. They must be ready and able to think in the moment to make changes on the spot that may perhaps bring about their survival in a dangerous or unstable moment. All the same applies to those that come to the earth. 
They must also make changes and accommodations in how they wrap around themselves a body that is more accommodating to this particular environment. It is as harsh an environment to those that find themselves here as it would be for you to go to be upon the surface of Venus or Mars, for example, with all of the severe temperature differences, all of the different elements, the different content of oxygen for a very simple matter. And so those that are able to come to the earth are also then just as your own space scientist astronauts. Many of them are astronauts. They are scientists, they are philosophers, they are educators, they are visionaries, they are explorers, they are discoverers and thinkers of thoughts, they are archaeologists, they are futurists, they are those with a heart for compassion, they are those who study and learn. And some are here to take back to their world all that they discover and some are simply here for the now time, an indeterminate amount of time to further interaction. They are missionaries, if you like, not with a particular spiritual agenda, but not without one either. Now, to think of these as advanced beings, yes, very well. You may think of them as advanced beings, if you like. For the most part, it is true, even if from just a scientific, advanced perspective. Yes, they have the ability to travel much further in their ships than you do. The ships that are theirs are a variety, and so it could not be called of one particular kind. There are those that are physical and those that are non-physical, and made of elements similar to those upon the earth, but made lighter. For instance, on aluminum of the earth, there is another kind of aluminum of another world, and the character, the elements, are basically the same, but it is much lighter, 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 thinner, 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 still with the same properties, still dynamic in the ways that they are, but because... It is expressed to a finer degree. It also has a different use associated with these. You may think the same in all of the other. Think of the finest form of propulsion that you have and then accelerate that and then miniaturize that and then make certain that all of the fuel associated with that is plentiful and for the most part harmless and then you will begin to see that is what they have and that is how they operate. And so this, so that you will know it as we explore this subject further, this is not new. If you were to ask, how long, Gaia, how long have these beings been upon the earth? How long? Well, longer than you have been upon the earth, dear ones longer than you. And so, if you ask yourself, how certain are you that the earth belongs to humanity and that humanity is there to steward the earth and that it is indeed the most advanced race that the earth has known? No, my sweet ones, no. Your family members are. But remember, as we said earlier, you are they and they are you. And you are part of a larger family than you now remember. But this part of the family or the branch of the family that we are speaking of now know the earth even more than you do. You see, they understand the timing cycles of the earth better than you do. Their memories of times prior to when the earth was made or even how the earth was made, are a little bit more current than yours. They are more alive. 
They have access to more libraries of thought than you do. And why? Why is that? It is simply because at a time and place where one train was going in an accelerating direction or motion, another one was moving in a decelerating motion. And so these family members, your family members, across the tracks, on the platform next to yours, were simply moving in another speed, in another direction. They then got to the earth before you did. They arrived at an accelerated earth. They were able to accelerate some of the properties, some of the natural properties of the earth and to recognize some of its principles and some of its undertakings. Then, knowing all that the earth would need to undergo, all of the natural cycles of the earth, they left the earth knowing that you would arrive and that more than likely you would think of it as yours because it would seem very empty at the time. It would seem as if it was a vacant planet, just perfect for you. But it did not matter then. There was no need to claim the earth. There was no need to populate it or overpopulate it, to call it your own or to own any bit of rock or country or continent or resource. And so they left long ago and for other parts, continuing to discover themselves and all the while knowing that they had planned to return and knowing that they would come to meet their brothers and sisters and cousins and family members at another time and in several other places. Remember that what you can remember now in this body, in this life, is limited in the now moment. You own all of your other memories. They are yours. All of your other experiences that you have had elsewhere, they are also yours. No one will take these with you. And in fact, no one has truly tampered with them in the way that you believe that they have been tampered with. However, you cannot remember all of them now. And when you do, they do not necessarily sound completely like you. It may be something else. And so some part of you is afraid of your own thoughts, afraid of your own histories, afraid of your own mysteries and of decoding them and deciding them and recognizing them. But all of that will come to a place of reconciliation as well. We have not yet answered the question, why? Why are those of other worlds here? What possible interest could they have in another world? Particularly if they are already come from an advanced race, what would they have to gain by being part of the earth and at this time? Well, some of them are not quite as advanced as you are because you look to the future and see many of the world's problems it is easy to imagine that there must be someone out there with solutions to all of these problems. You look about perhaps and see that there are wars raging about the world, that there is suffering, that there is starvation, that there is a misappropriation of the world's resources, and you say to yourself, certainly an advanced race would already have made it past this and would have solved many of these problems and found its answers. Well, indeed, and that is so. But more than that, they are not advanced in the ways that you are advanced. And these you cannot remember yet. You see, inherently within humanity is a permanent thought, an installed thought, that something greater is yours to inherit. 
that a greater purpose guides you. And even if you do not know it now, that at some point it will be revealed to you. Inherent within your structure, within your ideas, is the idea of a Godhead, a fount head, from where all things emerge. And as these original thoughts took hold or took shape, they found their way into and through the organism, your being, through the heart, laced into and through the heart. And so your ideas of rights and wrongs, it is okay to do this, it is not all right to do that. These ideas that you believe that perhaps you have gained from your parents, Perhaps you have gained by laws that have been enacted or what teachers have said do or not do or what society or culture has said. Inherent within all of these are truths that might seem very basic to you, but they are thoughts that come from an original family, from an original code, from a very old and ancient truth. How simple is that? And how could it be that many advanced races do not have this? Well, they simply do not. This conversation, these words do not apply to all, but certainly to some and to many, in fact. And so when you think of yourselves, think of yourselves, begin to think of yourselves not arrogantly advanced, for that you are not, as you well know. But you may think of yourself, if you like, as compassionately advanced, organized in such a way as compassion for another family member will ultimately guide and direct your thoughts and your actions. That is what you are discovering now and about to discover in an even greater way as this one beautiful and perfect age comes to a close and the next one begins to open its awareness. Again you would say to Gaia, Open your eyes, Gaia, but look about. Look at the world, look at your world, look at your planet. Do you not see the same wars raging as we do? Do you not see how easily one takes a life do you not see how small is the value of life itself? How little value one has for another? Look how they tear apart their body with a bomb and how quickly and eagerly, in fact, they will take others with them. Yes, sweets, yes, I know this well. I am part of your days and much more so than you know. And yet I tell you that this is a small window in comparison to what humanity is capable of in terms of its ability to love, to cure, to save, to solve, to bring forth. That is the world that you will birth again. But a little bit more time now until those that prefer weapons to destroy rather than to create have their last say. And so even this is of interest to those that come from other worlds. Imagine that there are those, just as you might study, histories of certain wars, and just where the course changed. How did the course move? from one of war to one of love? When did just the right battle occur that changed time, that changed the course of time itself? So many of those that have come to the earth, that is what they are here to discover. Because imagine that, sweet ones. Imagine if they can discover exactly what and when changes come, then 
that can be brought about even to a formula. And then imagine that they can go from world to world. And perhaps, perhaps, if there is willingness, change history, change the future, change the past. The same is true now of the earth. If you will see that you can change the present, that would certainly alter your future. And although you do not know it yet, it would also alter many different events that took place in the past, which would then open up dimensions. Again, I will explain better. If you are able to see just where the zig in the zag is, just where to turn left before something were to happen, adverse, then you could make a change. If you were to make a change, everything that you would do in the future would be changed. And because everything about the future would be changed, everything about the past could also potentially, not necessarily, but potentially be changed as well. Not only for one, but for many. That is not the exclusive reason that many are here, but it is one of them. Because the problems of the earth are age-old problems after all. They are the problems in some way that plague many third-dimensional worlds, not just the earth. In this way, there are many, many others that as they progress through certain stages begin to question the value of life the meaning of life, the purpose of life. And here I will tell you that of all the great studies that have been made of the great races, the great civilizations, and yes, even the great worlds, one of the things that has been discovered is that when the memories of a certain species have been altered, erased, or somehow forgotten, so that one does not have accurate histories. If the history is inaccurate, then the entire purpose or meaning of life has been skewed, and the future also forever altered. And so those races that have the most success upon new worlds and old worlds are those that have true and accurate histories of those that have lived before them, even if those histories are not very beautiful or pleasant, if one can trace in many different respects the true history of one's nature, not simply fathers and ancestors and like that, but the true architectural history of a world, then one world can be rebuilt based upon those truths, perhaps in a complete different forms, but based upon truth, which then becomes a higher truth. Now, humanity and the earth do not have that at this time. Humanity does not know, does not have the luxury of knowing its parenthood, its Godhead. It has been given imaginary or constructed histories. It has been given adopted parents. It has been looking in the right directions, but for the wrong thing. And so it has not recognized the truths and the more that it has not seen what has been hiding in plain sight, the more that it has closed its eyes, shut its eyes against a truer nature. That is what many have come to assist with, many who have been part of humanity's past because they are your family, because they have known the earth, and because they have known you in other times, in other worlds, in other dimensional expressions. And so there are many, many, many 
ET, extraterrestrial, off-planet family members that have been here for a very, very long time hiding in plain sight. Where are they and how are they? Many are very much like you. They would perhaps have a slight different flavor about them. Something that you would say that is a little bit exotic, that is a little bit different, that is a little bit unique, but not so much so that you would say there is not a chance that this is an earth being. Surely they must come from elsewhere. But again, as we said earlier, those thoughts are not open thoughts to humanity yet. You must begin to install that program, as it were, that you are part of a galactic family, part of a galactic race, and that you share the earth, not only with the other kingdoms that you have become familiar with, but with other beings of which are highly unfamiliar to you, but just as likely that they are indeed you. What you are, how you are. Are these advanced beings your teachers? Well, only some of them are, only to a small degree. Those that are your teachers will continue to be that, assisting you in an awakening process or a making peace with the idea process, and they will continue to light a path, light the way. Then there are those that do not walk among you. There are those that are hidden among you. And these are cloaked in a certain way, energetically speaking. Again, I tell you that you could bump into them and you would simply not notice them because they have erased, in essence, a personality or, or an essence. You would bump into a being as if bumping into someone on a sidewalk. You would not think twice other than to say, excuse me and be on your way again. At the end of the day, you could not even remember that you had stumbled upon them in a different way. And so they remain invisible to you, present, somewhat physical, but without the kind of personality traits or life traits or purposes that you do. And so their presence is noted, their purpose is noted. Many of these work with the different elements and kingdoms, but again, in inconspicuous places, and they are very little interested in having contact or friendships with humanity. They are simply not aligned that way. There are other beings that are not planetary beings. It is simply not easy nor compatible for them to be upon the earth. Not only that, but there is very little interest on their part. They are simply not interested in taking a job as you might be or of leading the kind of family life or structure that you might be. However, they are very interested in humanity as a race as an entire race, as a direction, at a crux moment in which shifting of times and the sands and the ages are making an entire change for the galaxy, for the solar system, a different alignment of sorts. And this interests them. And to the degree that it is important to the earth and to the species called humanity, they interact with the earth in the ways that they do. Again, there is less of what you would call a very sweet disposition or personality associated here. However, there is a good measure of compassion. They are not bereft of compassion. They are able to share themselves in the way that they do when there is a specific purpose associated with humanity associated. Many have been invited onto ships of one kind or another to interact in these, not necessarily to be experimented upon, as you might think. These are less and less of these moments. This was allowed at a certain time, some number of years ago, and humanity was truly not even conscious enough of it to object and to say, just a moment, sir, you are not able to do this or to bring it forward, or it is my life or not aligned with my highest purpose to go and be with you or like that. For the most part, these events do not take place any longer, except to the degree 
that there is a measure of agreement or alignment with those that are invited to participate. And along with the invitation is the disclaimer, if you like, that there will not be a memory associated with this upon return. And, however, there is an exchange of services, of goods, if you will. And at some point, those that have had these experiences will indeed remember them, will re-enliven those moments, and will bring them back so that they will serve them and others. Again, there are other off-planet beings as well who have no interaction with humanity whatsoever. They are more interested in the planet itself, just as when humanity now takes itself in its spaceship to another planet such as Mars, with its rovers and such, with the explicit purpose of discovering whether or not there was water or rocks or caves or past beings or the capability of supporting life or like that. In the same way, there are many that are part of the earth now that are simply determining what is the nature of the earth's resources, whether they will continue, what other resources would be needed, how they are used, and in essence, could they lend a hand if it were needed, would they, and what other resources can be useful upon their worlds or other worlds. Just as you may go from one city to another and see that there are all kinds of commerce and business and invitations to participate in life, either as a tourist or in business or what it will be, it is the same with those that see the earth in this capacity. And yes, yes, we must also acknowledge those that see the earth as that which can be exploited, as that which can be usurped, as that which can be manipulated. But so be it, sweet. I tell you that humanity does the same now. It is already in talks, if you wish to call them that, between each country for divvying up the solar system once they perfect space travel. Yes, that may surprise you, but it is so. How already will they divvy up the moon as they begin to mine some of its resources? This is a form of exploitation. No thought has been given to whether indeed there is life or what kind of life. It has simply been determined that there is no biological life there that is worth discovering or supporting just resources. Humanity also, those of one country, exploit those of another country for their resources or for their labor or what it will be. So it should not be surprising that those of other worlds would think in the same capacity toward the earth. Remember that I said to you earlier that though many will approach the earth from an advanced standpoint, that is not the case for all. And even were you to come across those that are indeed technologically advanced, scientifically advanced for humanity, it does not mean that they would not be interested in laying claim to what resources can be taken, purchased, stolen, or like that. It is a very large galaxy, after all. Those that humanity knows of long and long and longer ago, and those that have been written about at a certain time, they are still very much a part of the earth. So those that you would call the Anunnaki of long ago, they are still part of the earth. There is a little finger of them still here. And part of the reason why they are still here is that humanity has not disavowed them. It has not said, I will not be as you, or though you may be my surrogate parent, you are not my whole, my natural parent. And so humanity still, in some way, 
bows to them, to their way of life, to their understandings, to their exploitations. And so you carry these beings in you genetically. A time will come, and it is not in the distant future, where you will be able to refine your own genes. You will be able to selectively work with DNA. Already, to some degree, that is taking place, but it is not completely understood yet. And so what you will select in for or select out for, there will be some errors made in this. But imagine just for a moment that you select out the ability or the need to war with one another. When you select out that DNA, if you are not careful, you will also select out the memories that accompany how that came to be. So it would be important as genetics are studied, it would be very important, matter of fact, to understand how thoughts, how memories, cellular memories and genetic memories affect the DNA so that you do not rob yourself of some of the very truths that you are now wanting to discover. After all, that is what many of the beings that came to the earth long and longer ago did. They selected in genetics, they selected out other genetics, and in so doing, they moved your ability to know truth, origins, original truth, and more. So it could be said that humanity's growth was stunted to that degree. And though this could be considered a true manipulation, humanity did have moments in which it could have restored those truths. And it did not. It did not because it became more interested in the new truth than the original truth. It became more interested in the hunt or the discovery for the new resource than the old. Imagine it in the same way that you are now more interested in your future than you are in your past. Yes, yes, you'll get around to the past one day, but look. It's almost 2012, our future awaits. And so in that same way, those that could have restored memories and truths and reallocated the resources of the brain and thoughts did not. And so humanity's course of events took the direction that it did. And it was a long and beautiful journey in a variety of different directions and choices, and all of these have so benefited all that you are and all that you have discovered. Now, extraterrestrials and you are one. Certainly you have looked at a friend or another one across the way and said, now there goes an alien if I have ever seen one. Well, indeed, sweets. And I say the same to you. You are of alien origin, meaning that you are not original to the earth. You are not original to this planet. Your DNA is not original to this now time or to this now planet. So much more is there to you and about you. And so it is time to begin to look, look for your galactic family Welcome, receive, expand, explore. Remake your mind. Remake your ideas. In earlier words and in other recordings, you have heard me speak about looking to the skies. I tell you again, it is good now and then to look at the skies because you will begin to see them changing. You will begin to see that the color is slightly different. You will begin to see that although all of the stars are just where they are supposed to be, 
there is something unique or different. There is a quality about them that is unique. Now, is it the star that is changing? Is it their appearance in the sky that is changing? Is it your ideas about what they are and how they are placed that is changing? Is it your ability to see beyond what you expect to be there that is changing? Perhaps this is the idea that I am after, that I wish to place with you in conclusion. Your perception of what is out there, it is changing, let it. Your perception about who is out there is changing, let it. Let it be a part of your life and you will be here and there. You will see that it will benefit you in many ways. You will see that you will be able to think ideas that are forward thinking, more visionary ideas, expanded ideas. You will see that it will give to you a kind of longevity that will allow you to see it is not just this moment that I am after or the improvement of next moment or next year. You will begin to see a greater progression of worlds and how worlds are truly formed and what is their purpose and what family plays a role in all of these purposes. Look to those that are among you. They are alien in origin. Look to those that are strangers and to those that are friends and welcome them. It is not a time to live in fear or anxiety. It is a time to live in search for the truth a simpler truth, a greater truth, an expanded truth. Some of it is visible just beneath your nose, as they say. Some of it is invisible and in the same place. Trust in both. Trust in a world that is making itself, remaking itself, as it has many, many, many times before this. Trust that you have been part of this remaking, as you have many times before this. Trust in the level of interest of those that wish to know, to see, to discover, and to try, even if you cannot see the wisdom of it in the moment. And if this subject continues to delight you, then make it part of your intention to take an alien to tea or to welcome one as your friend. Truly, Begin to have it your intention to share this world with those that have much to say and much to share and much to offer. Make yourself a candidate for companionship for those that are on planet and off planet. It is time. It is now time. I am happy to have shared this subject with you. Perhaps it is one that you will take delight in and we will meet in short order in order to discuss it more thoroughly, to question it and to explore it individually and collectively. Until then, we will call this moment complete. I bid you good day.